Uh, this is Bruce Perlow, and I'm the CEO of Marijuana Inc. Uh, and the stock symbol is HEMP. Now, because we have the stock symbol HEMP, we focus primarily on entertainment and um, media. Uh, we have a studio in California, and we also have a bunch of products made from hemp that we sell in our company under the Kush Clear line. So. We're now talking about a product that we're going to release, which is one of my favorite products because I invented it, okay? What it is, is we did this in another company, so I'm going to explain this, uh, how we're rolling this out in uh, Kush Clear. It's uh, the Hidden Treasures candle. What that means is that you have, we make a little candle like this. We put a hemp wick in it because a hemp wick burns down very, very clean. It doesn't... It's, you know, it's, it's a very, very good product for that. And we put some hemp oil in there as well. But mostly we use natural soy um, wax for our candles. So it's all natural. And when you burn down inside the candle, it's a gemstone. So when I first came up with the idea, I thought it was a Cracker Jack of an idea. Uh, for those of you that don't know about Cracker Jacks, they put a one penny prize inside of Cracker Jacks. It was one of the most successful marketing programs in the history of America. So I sort of got the idea of a gemstone. The other reason is because I like to have like sort of analogies in everything we do in the marketplace. And so the analogy here is that when you burn down and get your gemstone, that's to show you that the treasure is within. The treasure is within all of us. And then adding another analogy, the fire that burns down to get to the treasure could be likened to the fire that purifies. So the trials and tribulations that we go through life are worth it because if we hang in there and we have a positive attitude, the fire that purifies will put you through a lot of problems and ups and downs, but eventually you get to the treasure within. It's within you. It's right here in your heart. And so uh, if you look inside here, you will actually buy, when you buy these, you'll actually get a gemstone. And interesting enough, this particular gemstone is shaped like a heart. So, they're not all shaped like a heart, but I did that on purpose just to illustrate the point. All right, now, with me is, uh, and by the way, this is gemstones. Are they popular? My wife burnt every single one of these gems, <laughs> candles so she could get her gemstone, and she has a nice collection of gemstones. All right, they are very popular. The women love them. The Dennis Rutt, he's from Brazil. And this is where we get our gemstones from. We get them from all over the world, primarily from Dennis and Dennis's father. So Dennis, tell us a little bit about where you come from, what the mines are, where they are, and what kind of stones come from these mines in Brazil for the gemstone candles. Okay, uh, yes, we've been in Brazil since uh, 1976, and uh, we've been uh, working with all different types of mining there. But at the moment, we're working with uh, the extraction of this kind of product, which is topaz and amethyst. Uh, both of them come from Brazil. Now, now that's, the, that's the topaz. Uh, the topaz is the blue. Oh, the blue. The uh, amethyst is the purple. And the, uh, the uh, yellow is the citrine. And uh, we do the mining ourselves. We, uh, we have a crew that works uh, full-time there at the mines. It's uh, mostly in remote uh, desert areas, and uh, there are no uh, no uh, living facilities around, so we have to build everything from scratch. And uh, after we get the the primary living standards uh, where we can get the crew in, then we start digging and uh, we start uh, bringing the stones out. We send it to a cutting shop, which is in Teflotoni. That's the major uh, gemstone city in Brazil. We do the cutting there in our cutting shop. And after everything's cut, we send them here to the States. Well, you know, I just got an idea um, when he talked about the mine. This is the first time I've met Dennis. I've worked with his father mostly, mm -hmm. and he was here in Brazil. I mean, he's here in Las Vegas from Brazil, and he came by um, because he gives us these stones up front, or his father does, and then we pay him later, So, um, uh, which is uh, somewhat of a policy we have. You know, we, you know, Everybody wants us to sell their hemp products, and we tend to say, okay, front them to us, and we will sell them for you, because we're very prolific marketers. So I feel what a great opportunity to not to meet Dennis, because I've never met him. I've dealt with your father a lot. 
Who's the better miner, you or your father? No, he is. <laughs> oh, he is. Okay. Don't ask my son that because my, you know, the children are always... But aren't you smarter than him? No. <laughs> Not at the moment. Maybe sometime in life. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When you, okay. When he was a teenager, maybe you were smarter, but now he's a little older, he realizes the father maybe knows a little bit more. Yeah. Which is your mind and which is your father's mind? Uh, my father's mind is the amethyst and the citrine mine. I do uh, the topaz mining. And um, we, uh, we, we do this mining especially because it's close to my home. And uh, my father, he goes way up in the Amazon and does the mining there for the amethyst. So he's wilder than you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we'll build kin's domains, uh, to those that I described. Mm -hmm. again, um, part, again, what we're doing here is we're combining two industries. One is building kin's domains, and we're showing people how they can make money in kin's domains. These will be made out on the kin's domains out in Dolan Springs. And again, the kin's domains came from the series of books, The Ringing Cedars of Russia, or The Ringing Cedars book, um, out of Russia. Uh, again, Anastasia lives in Siberia. Uh, Vladimir, which is an uh, entrepreneur, goes to uh, Siberia, meets Anastasia, and she tells him uh, information, and they write, he writes a book uh, based on her information, which comes from ancient Vedic uh, literature. Uh, and she comes from ancient Vedic civilization. That's her lineage. And she's reintroducing the ancient Vedic culture to America or to the world, actually, because this has been translated into, you know, uh, over a dozen languages. It's somewhere between 19 or 29, I forget exactly which. And the book sold 10 million copies in Russia alone. So it's very, very popular, and people all want to move back to the land and build kin's domains, but it's not that easy to go live out, you know, run off to the countryside and try and make a living, like in the mines. You know, you have a livelihood with those people. They can mine and bring gemstones for us to work almost like in partnership, mm -hmm. right? And I'm going to get an idea of building kin's domains around the mine because that'd be a perfect environment for the miners to work in. So we'll work on that later. But the way to change the world, which is what Anastasia wants to do, and according, of course, I do as well, um, is to build kin's domains. Well, that's easy. If it all it takes to do is to change the world is to build kin's domains, I'm in. Okay, I'll build a couple million kin's domains all over the world, and as this series rolls out, you will not just see how we're building a kin's domain, and you're not just seeing how we provide an economic model for kin's domainers, or settlers as some of them call themselves, to make money. Um, we're going to show you how many hundreds of thousands of acres that we have around the world. And we always like to combine what's happening at the kin's domain with some type of industrial hemp product. In this case, it's going to be hemp candles. We'll start with soy, because that's what we happen to have from the old generation, with a hemp wick, um, supporting a mine, helping support the mine, the people in Brazil in reality, with these gorgeous gemstones. Now, you know, we know from past history, from the last company, they had 22 nutrition products. I introduced the gemstone candles. That company was called Affinity Lifestyles. And um, it, within one month, it was the second bestseller. The only thing that else sold it was the weight loss product, which I can understand why. So, uh, so this is a very, very popular product. Look for it. They are available. They will be available actually now as soon as we figure out how to get it on the website and as soon as we finish pouring. And that'll be on our next segment or the second half of this segment is actually how a kin's domain can make money because I don't care where the kin's domain is. We will teach you how to make hidden treasure candles. So, now Dennis, tell us a little bit about more about these gemstones that we have here. Um, for instance, what is this package? Uh, you know, because some of you, you never know what you're going to get. You know, it's like the Cracker Jacks, right? Here's some smaller ones. What, what are these? Because I um, bought those from your father. Yes, this, uh, actually this is a mixture of... Uh, show, show the candle. A mixture of all kinds of uh, different stones that come out of Brazil. We actually call this a Brazil mix. It's kind of like a salad where you get a bunch of veggies mixed in. It's kind of the same thing. You get uh, all different colors, all different types of stones from all different regions of Brazil. And uh, here you have uh, uh, topaz, amethyst, citrine, garnet, uh, a little bit of zircon. And uh, 
It's a wide variety of what we're producing at the moment. Okay, and your dad or you? Uh, mostly my father, yes. I, I only work with the topaz. So. Okay, so your father's the wild one. Yeah, he's, he's the like one. He's like me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my sons are more like you. <laughs> and what are these here? Those are garnets. Those are garnets and uh, this is uh, a very typical color from the northern part of Brazil. It, uh, this was cut in my cutting shop and uh, it's a type of stone that we can probably cut about uh, 200 stones a day. Okay, and these green ones, what are those green ones? These are peridot. Peridot, this is mined in Arizona, United States. Oh, these come from America. Okay, yes. good. Um, awesome. And uh, let's see, anything that, oh, the black, these black ones, what are these? Those are smok smoky quartz. It's a uh, type of stone that you find all over Brazil, so you can't really see where it's from because it's just all over the place. And uh, most of these stones, you just pick them up off the ground. You, the smoky quartz, you really don't have to mine. Just, uh, it's just on the ground, you pick it up and send it to the cutting shop and we cut them. So that's why the value is not as high as most of the other gemstones. Okay, so sometimes you'll get smoky quartz. So, <laughs> you know, we have, but sometimes you'll get a big smoky quartz, such as this one right here. You know, again, you never know what you're going to get in your hidden treasure candle. That's I, right. But just because it, it doesn't have as much value as the other ones, it doesn't mean that it doesn't have value. Because there's still a lot of uh, labor involved, which is part of the art of making a gemstone. Now, tell us a little about your life in Brazil and how you got into this industry and gemstones and what you thought about and, you know, in your fa do you have a wife? Yes, yes, uh, I have a wife, but uh, my family's been in the gemstone since uh, the 60s and that's how I got into it. Actually, I've been doing gem shows since I was 10 years old and uh, been following my father all around Brazil and doing mining with him, so uh, it's, I guess it's a family business. Did you ever go up to the Amazon with them? Oh yes, many times, yes. Are there snakes up there? Oh, there's all kinds, all kinds of... Lana, there's snakes in, in the Amazon. <laughs> and they're not small. <laughs>